Let's move on to find the synthesis matrix of a 1D fluid flow problem. So far we've got here, we know what the definition of a 1D fluid flow is, a fluid that flows inside a pipe linearly. We discretized a problem or an element and drew its free body diagrams, the fluid flow rate and potential per element or per node, the velocity per element and the velocities at each node. And we also found the potential function for the element to relate to give us the potential at each location along the length of the pipe. Darcy's law relates the velocity to potential using this equation. V of x is equal to minus kxx times round phi over round x. And kxx is permeability, which is the property of the medium through which the fluid flows. And these values are given in tables in fluid mechanic textbooks. Because we're studying this e equation or this problem in 1D, we can replace the round or partial with d. So it could be minus kxx times d phi over dx. And then we can replace the potential function equation here and find its derivative with respect to x. And if we do that, we'll find this value relating the nodal velocity, or this would actually be an element, so this would be the element velocity with the potentials, the nodal potentials. We have a 1 by 2 row matrix and we have a 2 by 1 vector that if we multiply we'll have the 1 by 1 scalar which is the element velocity and element velocity in 1D one, one fluid flow is equal or uh, equivalent to stresses and structural analysis. So, so far we've got the relationship between the velocity and potentials and an element. Now we need to find the relationship between the fluid flow rate and potential. Fluid flow rate and velocity are related through this equation, f is equal to v times a, and we know that v is related to phi or to p's. As a result, we can say f is equal to minus kx x a over L, which we found here, times this 1 by rho or 1 by 2 rho matrix times 2 by 1 vector. So the only difference is that we have to add an A there. So we found the relationship between the fluid flow rate and the potentials. Now fluid flow rate at node 1 is equal to this value. We have minus over there, we have minus 1, we have 1, and then this is p1x and p2x. If we bring this negative sign inside the matrix, we'll have kxx times a over l, 1 minus 1, and then we'll have the 2 by 1 nodal potential uh, vector. We can do the same thing here, but if you remember from this slide that F2x and P2x are moving outward from the element. So F2x is actually negative, and as a result, we remove that negative sign from here, because if we multiply a negative by a negative, we'll get a, we'll get a positive. So this becomes Kxx times L, A over L, minus 1, 1, P1x, P2x. Now we have the same coefficients for our matrix formation. We can move on to find the stiffest matrix for a 1D fluid flow problem. Now we have the fluid flow rate here. It's a vector 2 by 1. And we have the potentials per node, which is also a 2 by 1. So we found a 2 by 2 stiffest matrix for the 1D fluid flow rate, or 1D fl fluid flow. This is also very similar to 1D conduction heat transfer. If you have a wall or a slab, that one end of it is at T1 and the other end is at T2, and there's a cross-section A, which could be constant or changing, we can say that the stiffest matrix of such a problem is equal to this. Here, Fs are the nodal heat flow rate, 
and the T's are temperature and KXX would be conductivity of the material. So we can write the same form of the uh, stiffest matrix for the 1D fluid flow or 1D conduction heat transfer. So we found the procedure to find the stiffest matrix for the 1D fluid flow rate and 1D heat transfer in conduction.